my the difference a couple days makes <laughs> i didn't film the other day but we were at 80 degrees and now we're below 40. the weather is crazy but we're starting to look a little bit better i got a few weeds i was pulling some of the weeds here but i decided to wait till we get the bed frame fixed so i don't lose all my soil and i got we got all the uh weed barrier from here and we would like the plan is to try and burn all of the weeds that are in this bed and i did get all these fruit areas i got those weed eated so i need to put ground cover and stuff down but at least they got weed eated and th that's about all i got done that was a pretty big job so we did all of that and i'm gonna go to another area that is in really really sad shape i literally did not do any weeding at all last year so i'm gonna show you how bad that is but it's okay we'll fix it okay this is my herb garden believe it or not <laughs> i have a lot of herbs in here and i literally just let this thing go last year i had so much going on i wasn't able to keep up with it so the good thing about gardens is you can take them back and bring them back and they will be great so we are going to work on this i think i'm going to try and get the garden pathways we did first and hopefully we will be able to make some progress with that but anyways on to more garden cleanup <laughs> all right change of plans i think i'm going to start at this other end down here as <laughs> you can tell i'm decisive i'm indecisive so <laughs> I'm struggling here but I think I'm gonna start at this end because I think it will make the most difference there are really really big weeds down there that's gonna be really hard to get so we're gonna start here and hopefully make a lot of progress we don't have a whole lot of time today but I'm doing it in small increments <laughs> that way I don't kill myself okay so here we go man I cannot believe how bad the weeds are it definitely looks like I didn't touch it for a year it looks so bad, but it is so much more encouraging to weed at this time of year. Um, where I'm at, the weeds grow like crazy. Liter I don't know what we have. We have like a crabgrass or a Bermuda grass or something like that that is a really horrible weed. And in the summertime, we can weed and then like four days later, you would never know it. So it's really discouraging to weed on top of being out in the really, really hot temperatures. It is pretty miserable and very discouraging. So it is a whole lot nicer to just weed now. And as you can see, this video was taken over several days and it was so much nicer because the weeds just didn't grow back. So that is really encouraging. Also to give a little bit of perspective of to how big this area is, it's probably about 30 feet long and about 20 foot wide from the side of the house there all the way to the edge like where the flowers are. So it's a pretty big space. I also have to do the other side of the porch. It's not super big, but I don't think it will take me very long. So I'm not gonna do any of it in this video it'll just be something really short that we can accomplish in another video i have had this herb area for a really long time i was trying to remember the exact year that we built it i think it was somewhere around 2015 2016 something like that and we have done all kinds of different things for the walkways uh, I started out with just doing cardboard and then doing the mulch. I was able to get some of the tree people who were trimming trees to bring me some of the wood chips. And I did that for quite a few years. I just did cardboard and then that. And then we, we still had really bad weeds and we decided that we were going to try and do uh, like rocks so we did that as well and we really disliked that even more <laughs> so after that we decided to put down like some of it's black plastic and some of it's this like white plastic we have actually the white plastic has held up better it was just something we had got at an auction and that has held up really really good like surprisingly well you'll be able to see the difference in some of these videos 
but we did that and then I think when I, the last thing I did with that is I added more wood chips over the years I keep getting more <laughs> more deliveries of the wood chips and that was the last thing I did and I've recently started doing the ground cover and I think I like that a lot better because the wood chips will like break down and make this amazing soil but the bad thing is is there's weeds there so I can't even use this amazing soil because it's got so many weeds in it so I think I'm going to just do the ground cover. Um, I'm not going to get to that in this video. This is going to definitely be a parts video because there is so much that I have to do. But we will eventually get to that and I think it's going to make it look so much nicer. And last year I used that in my vegetable garden in the walkways and it made such a big difference. It was so much nicer not to have to weed eat the walkways and worry about all that. It was really, really nice. It didn't hold up the best. I still have a few spots. I may end up trying to just, just like patch it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do or go over it, but man, it was super, super nice and I was super thankful for that. So that's what we're going to do with this area this year. Another goals thing that I would love to be able to do in this area, if you can tell, there is a long strip with a lot of daffodils that I have here. I think I want to move them or I don't know. I'm thinking I want to put ground cover here and I really want to do zinnias. I did that one year and it looked so beautiful and but I don't know what to do because I kind of like the daffodils being here but also I can't really plant my zinnias and the zinnias last a whole lot longer than the daffodils do so I'm on the fence. I don't know exactly what I want to do with that but I think I would really like to do zinnias there so hopefully we'll be able to do that as well. If y'all have any suggestions of what you think I should do for this little strip or this flower area y'all leave it down below in the comments because I'm all ears. I love hearing different people's ideas and I hope we can finally figure out something to do that looks really good. So in this herb bed I've got I think five raised beds and then I also have a bed there next to the house as well as that little strip with the flowers but in the raised beds the main five raised beds I have a bunch of herbs. <laughs> a lot of these are perennial herbs. I have our comfrey plants. These are the little uh, root cuttings that I got years and years ago. And we literally got them, I think, whenever we put this in. So around 2014, 15, 16, somewhere around in there, whenever that ended up being. And those are really massive comfrey plants. Uh, last year, I took a whole lot of cuttings from them. I just like took like root cuttings and plants. <laughs> They're getting so big I could just take whole plants and I planted over a hundred of them last year just in my fruit area that I made. So we have got a lot of comfrey plants. Um, other things that I have out there are catnip. They have a beautiful purple flower and it's also medicinal as well as the comfrey. It's medicinal too and the comfrey I also use as fertilizer and it is really amazing. <laughs> we use comfrey for a lot of things, like I said, medicinally and other other ways, and the fertilizer, it's, it's great. So we had the catnip that has the pretty purple flowers. What else do I have? I have uh, chives, just plain chives out there. In my uh, vegetable garden, I've got uh, garlic chives. I have those there. And then in my third bed here, or the middle bed, I have a bed full of nothing but lemon balm. <laughs> I started out with just a few plants and I quickly, quickly realized that it really takes over. <laughs> I have it all over in the walkways and it is just spread like crazy. And it's a mint plant, but it doesn't spread like most mints. You know, usually they have like the runners that spread that way. They do get really big and bushy, but they just reseed themselves every Everywhere. So that's my issue that I have with them, but it's nice because I use them a lot. This is what I use to make my cleaning vinegar and it's also a medicinal as well. So it is really nice. It smells really good. It has a great lemony smell. And let's see, I'm trying to remember what else. Oh yes, I have a few marshmallow plants, but they are on 
that uh, long area next to the house. And I'm thinking I would like to either move them or start new plants. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it and put them in the middle of the bed cause they get really big and tall and they have really pretty flowers and are a good medicinal too. <laughs> so I would like to put those in the middle of the beds. I think that would be nice. Another thing I have is oregano. I grew those from uh, little uh, cuttings like the, the fresh uh, herbs that you get in the grocery store. I grew those from that and I have so many oregano so and it is getting really big. Um, I'm trying to remember what else. We have several uh, wild edible things and medicinals that pop up. We have like dandelions and um, what is it called? Pers not not purslane. <laughs> not that. What is it? Plantain. That's it. Plantain. We have that too. And I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of wished I would have saved some of those and like dehydrated them. I wasn't even thinking. I was just thinking of the task at hand of <laughs> getting all of the weeds taken care of. But I wished I would have done that and I could have just went ahead and dehydrated them. But sometimes it, you just have to focus on one thing. And if you do just, just get sidetracked, you don't get as much done, or at least that's the way it is with me. <laughs> so I was just sticking to the task at hand. <laughs> Another herb or medicinal that I have at the very end of the house there that's a really tall plant, that is elderberry. I thought this plant was not going to make it. It struggled for so long, but it's finally starting to perk up and do a little bit better. So I have that there. And I also have another comfrey plant on that area there next to the house. Um, some other things that I have that aren't uh, medicinal or anything like that, we have a few strawberry plants that survived that are there uh, next to the house there. Um, in that little strip there and then I've tried to put them in the garden beds but that did not work out for some reason I don't know if it's just because we have such severe uh, sun and heat here <laughs> but whenever I put them in the beds they don't make it so I found that the strawberries do a lot better where they have some shade um, as what also you can see that uh, we have kale plants I've got I know I've got a uh, curly kale out there and I've also got the ragged jack kale. I think it's also called Russian kale. It has done really good and is a really good plant, but we actually like the flavor of the curly kale better. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we do have a little bit of that Lacianata or dinosaur kale. I believe we still have some of it out there, but it is starting to go to seed and blooming, but I, it brings in a lot of good insects. So I probably will leave it. And I've had really good luck with just letting it bloom like that. And it does kind of like the lemon balm does, and it will just self seed everywhere. And my plants that like volunteered from that have been so healthy and really happy plants. <laughs> so I may end up letting, letting them do that. I'm not not sure. I always struggle with these beds here. I guess it's because of the weeds and what to do <laughs> with them, but especially those last two beds, they're kind of new beds that I had put in, especially that last one. I think I did that a year or two ago. That's why I didn't have the black plastic all the way. That was kind of just <laughs> an afterthought that I just decided to add on to. So I have that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I know on that long strip where I have the flowers, I have a couple of different mints. And these are the ones that do the, <laughs> the runners underneath the ground. And they, I was surprised whenever I was going through there. Um, they had already made it all the way across the walkway. <laughs> but I have an apple tree that I planted a comfrey plant next to. It's kind of close to that strip and I have a chocolate mint there. I love the way chocolate mint smells. And then at the very end, I have a rose bush and I think it's called sweet mint that I have there. And <laughs> we did this trial last year. I, I was really excited about mints and I probably have like seven different varieties of mints. <laughs> but we did this trial because I was like, well, we have all this and they produce so much, you know, we need to use it. So we tried to make different mint teas and I tried multiple different methods of doing it <laughs> and none of us liked any of it. So I am really on the fence of what to do about my mint plants, but I will say I have like planted most of it around the house and I was thinking last year this was kind of just coincidental, but last year 
I didn't, or I guess the year before last, I didn't have any issues with mice. We live out in the country, so sometimes that's an issue. But this was the second year in a row that we did not have issues with mice. And I have heard that that will help. And I was like, I don't know, I'll try it. But I really think that might have some truth to that statement because this is the second year in a row that we have not had any issues. And I think it might be because of the mint. All right, that did not take very long where this black plastic was. It just kind of rolled up. All the roots had matted together and rolled up like a carpet. So that was really, really nice. We got a whole lot here up until where there was no black uh, plastic here. So I'm just going to take the weed eater to that whenever I get it out next. or And then we'll hopefully be able to put ground cover down. But as you can see, <laughs> you probably can't tell that there's garden beds, let alone uh, pathways through here. <laughs> but there are. <laughs> so I think I'm going to start. I still have a little bit more daylight. I think I'm going to start on this and we'll see how much progress we can make because it is really fast whenever um, we have this black plastic here. So I think we're going to try and get a little bit more done. I'm trying not to get y'all in the anthill. <laughs> okay, so we'll try this again. And another thing, I'm sure you see that old air conditioning unit. That ended up breaking a year or so ago. So we replaced it with window units and just used little heaters in the house. And since we aren't using that, I decided that that would be a great place to do our lettuce. We really like lettuce, and I found these um, stackable containers, kind of like the green stalks, but they are a whole lot cheaper. <laughs> so I got those at the Dollar Tree, and last year was my first year doing it. I think I got six of them, and it worked so good. I, I used to do my lettuce different in the raised bed, but since that, I have decided that I want to do them in that. The only thing is you have to remember to water them a little bit more frequently, like I generally try and do it daily, and that works great. I am so happy with that. I like it so much that we decided to get a whole nother stack, stack this year so we can grow even more lettuce. So I am super excited about that. I think I might have a video sharing that coming up later too, but it is really cool. It is my favorite way to grow lettuce. Okay, we're starting to run out of daylight, but I think we can get another little path here done. We'll just, we'll see. Another new thing that has been super great is we got this rain barrel from our local farm store and it has been so nice <laughs> to be able to water the plants back here without carrying the water so far. We've kind of dispersed the rain barrels throughout and that has helped so much with being able to water and we don't have like outside hookups or anything so that makes it a lot nicer. And that's another thing I do. I don't use our city water to water our plants. I only use rainwater. I have found that it works so much better. The plants are so much happier. And where we're at, we have a whole lot of chlorine in the water. It's so bad that we even have to filter all of our water and use shower filters. And it's pretty bad. So I, if it's that bad for us, it's going to be that bad for the plants. So I don't do that. I only do rainwater. Okay, I haven't done much of anything else with the herb garden. Um, I think today what we're going to try and accomplish is get all of these really tall lemon balm bits down and get this pathway, hopefully that pathway, the next pathway, and possibly this long pathway. We'll see how much daylight we still have. Oh, and I was going to show our daffodils are starting to bud out just a little bit. It is crazy the amount of material that came out of just this bed alone with the lemon balm. That is the only negative in my opinion to the lemon balm is it has these really big stalks that you have to take down or cut back and that's my only negative. I love it. It smells really good. It gets really big and bushy and also that it reseeds but that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending upon how you look at it. But it really does have a lot of material, but it really isn't hard to break off. As you can see, I'm just like kind of tearing it off. So it's not hard to do. It's just a lot of bulk material that you have to deal with. So we really love lemon balm around here. This is why I have a whole bed dedicated to it. So we use it medicinally and also we use it to make our cleaning vinegars. 
I use the fresh herb in the summertime and I use the dry herb in the wintertime. I have separate videos showing how I do that for each season. I use it in my all-purpose cleaner that I make and we also use it in the laundry. It helps to soften the clothes and also makes it smell really nice. We also use it to clean the washing machine. I found that whenever you use vinegar in your washing machine that it helps to soften the hairs. So if you have like hairs built up on the side or the wall of your washing machine, it helps to wash it all out and get it nice and clean. So that's worked really great for us. Another thing I try and do on a regular basis is to use baking soda and vinegar and wash that down the drain. That helps keep the drains clean and it also keeps them smelling nice. I try and use, I make, do a lot of baking and we make pretzel buns. So I use the leftover baking soda from that and I use the vinegar. So it gets washed quite frequently, but it works really good and it helps an awful lot with keeping the drains really nice and clean and smelling so good. This evening when I was out here, it is actually a lot darker than what it looks on camera, but it was pretty dark. I'm doing my best here to try and be careful. I'm trying to move my feet around and it really looked like a really snaky area. And also, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you can just get that feeling. Maybe I'm weird, but I kind of get a feeling and know to kind of be careful or something's not right. So I was trying to be really, really careful here and I actually ended up finding a snake. <laughs> so luckily he wasn't too horribly mad. He didn't like strike at me or anything. He was starting to curl coil up a little bit, but that was it. He he uh, went ahead and went under the house, I guess, because by the time I brought the camera, he was done gone. But it was so funny. I screamed, and most of the time, whenever I scream, I'm on my own. Nobody comes to save me. <laughs> but I guess I was close enough to the house that Robert heard me, and he actually came out, and he was so funny. He's like, well, I actually heard you. <laughs> So, so I wasn't on my own, but everything was fine. I didn't get hurt or anything like that, but I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> and he came out and he's like, well, I actually heard you, <laughs> but it was really funny. Also, I forgot to mention, don't worry, it wasn't a poisonous snake or anything. It's actually the same little snake that we did a short video of semi-recently. Um, it's got the little stripes and the little dots on it. I think it's just like a little garden snake, garter snake, whatever you call them. But funny story, we had this, I think it was like a rat snake. It was pretty long. It was like probably six, seven feet. And we had had this same snake for probably like... I don't know, four to five years, maybe six years, and it had gotten really big, and it, we would see it each year, you know, we, it was fine, you know, it, it kind of helps with the mice and issues like that, and this was like a couple years ago, um, we, it was crossing the road, okay, so we have had this snake, it comes in the garden, you know, where it's, it, it never bothered us, you know, it just always went on its own way, so anyways, it was going across the road, and this truck stops, and picks up the snake and steals our snake. <laughs> I had named him Mr. Snakey and everybody thought I was crazy because I <laughs> started saying, oh my God, they just stole Mr. Snakey. <laughs> so it was really funny, but everybody in the house thought I was crazy. <laughs> They're like coming in so confused. They're like, what's going on? And I'm like, these people just took the snake and I guess they must have got it because I have not seen that snake since. And since it's been gone, we've had a few more of these smaller little garter snakes come in. All right, I am gonna really dark. I have found a snake. I think he done slithered away by the time I got the camera and a big old toad. But we are this far, got a big old wheelbarrow load. And we've got all these, like pretty much got everything I wanted to do. There's a, oh, the plastic had gotten moved so there's stuff in the ground there that I can't get up I'll probably have to get a shovel but we basically got to the same end as we did there and that's where the plastic stopped so I pretty much got to everything I wanted to get to we still got to get the garden beds but this bed looks so much better and we actually can see walkways now which is almost like a miracle <laughs> there we go we have walkways all of the walkways have now been recovered that's wonderful. 
Okay, I think that's all we're gonna do for today. Now we're on to another day and I'm going to tackle all the weeds in the garden bed since we actually got all the walkways done. So I am trying to tackle all this in smaller chunks. For one, I only have so much time I can dedicate to this. And also I don't wanna like injure myself or anything like that. I find it's a lot better to kind of go slow and steady <laughs> than try and do everything all at once. Also, I know I do a lot of my planting by the garden planting calendar, and it's best to do your weeding on the killing days, but I have so much weeding to do that I just had to do it whenever I could find time. So I'm actually doing a lot of this weeding on not the best day, but it's what I could find time to get done. Here you can see a few of our kale plants that we have. They have done really good over the winter and I don't cover them or anything. And we had some really cold days. Like we were into the single digits some nights Nights, and they looked pretty sad after that and I didn't know if they were gonna make it but this spring they have just blown up and are doing really good can y'all believe how big some of them weeds are I could not believe that I was so happy to get some of them out they have been bothering me for a long time and they get really big in the summertime and I was so happy just to get it all in one big chunk like that and it was so big it almost tipped the wheelbarrow over <laughs> Also, I had to be really careful for all of my perennial herbs that I already had in here. I almost took out my oregano plant. I completely forgot that it was there and it was kind of slow to get going compared to the other things and I almost completely forgot about it. But it's okay. I think it'll make it and if it doesn't, I have a bunch of other ones so it'll be just fine. This next day, I was trying to accomplish two different things. <laughs> One, I was trying to get a bunch of the plants that are in the walkways like I was saying about the lemon balm it is crazy so I was trying to get that out of the walkways and also there are a few spots in my bed that they haven't got put and are kind of sparse so I'm deciding to just fill all that up with the extra plants in the walkway and as you can see behind me there are a lot of plants like up next to the house <laughs> that have just started growing that I still need to dig out and add to that in section as well but we're making slow progress <laughs> we're slowly getting there but it was really nice to get all these big plants out of the walkway. Here in a little bit, Robert's going to bring out the little dog. He said he was going crazy and so worried about me, so he brought him outside to show him that I was okay and everything was okay and he was super happy about getting to come outside. Well, I think we're going to end it here and let this be part one. Be sure and subscribe so you can catch part two and hopefully we'll have a whole lot more plants out here and it will be blooming and beautiful. Thank y'all so much for spending your time with me and listening to me ramble on about the garden. If you can't tell, I absolutely love gardening and can go on and on about it. <laughs> so thank y'all so much. If y'all made it this far, leave some kind of flower emoji down in the comment and I know that y'all watched all the way through. But thank y'all again so much. Uh, I hope that y'all's gardens do amazing and y'all enjoy it and have so many beautiful things and are super abundant. Thank y'all again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!